have to stop. This is absolutely. You know, you have to stop. Just a second. Just a second. No, no, now. Okay. 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 God, God, sorry. No, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is a horrible mistake. <gasps> I'm sorry, I got a WD-40 to store. Tom? Yeah? Jesus, what are you doing here? I know, I know, I'm sorry. I, I, got, I flew all the way to Dallas, and all the connecting flights were canceled to NOLA because it was hurricane warnings, and you know I could have waited and tried to get in the morning, but then I thought to myself, now I can get home for Elle's birthday, right? So, you say I never surprise you? Surprise! <laughs> Listen, I, I got you some flowers. Yeah, it's been way too long. Sorry, um, do you want to see him? Can I turn on the light, L? L? L, did you go back to sleep? Tom. I'm really sorry. Tom. Oh God, please forgive me. Just give us a chance to get dressed. You always wonder what you do in a situation like this. Oh, nothing stupid, Tom. Please, this just happened. It just happened? You mean like I just happened to be out of town? And you just happened to find yourself between my wife's legs. No, 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 Tom, stop. Just give us a chance to get dressed, please. Daryl will leave, and then we can talk. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get the hell out of here. And uh, you guys talk. Just uh, give me a minute. All right, all right, Tom. You work out, Daryl? Yeah, uh, sit-ups, push-ups mainly. Honestly, though, it's about the diet. D Daryl, stop talking, please. Oh, it's, it's really paying off. I'll let you two finish up. No, Tom, please, don't leave. Wait downstairs for me. We need to talk. I honestly don't think I know what to say. You going out? Um, I don't have any idea where I am right now. You're in heaven, sweetie. God, I hope not. Listen, can I ask you a question? Depends. How old are you? Okay, um, there's plenty of older girls around here. Yeah, the MILF thing. MILF? You don't know what a MILF is? No. You don't do porn? No. <laughs> you trolling for pussy and you don't do porn. Yeah, I gotta call bullshit. <laughs> not, not every man does porn. Yes, every man does. Where the fuck have you been? Look, 
We gonna party or you want older? I mean, I got a friend, Serena. She's like way fucking up there, but she's hot though. She's Could like, I uh, maybe get you a meal? Not unless you pay for the meal and pay me to eat it. Fuck, you a cop? Oh, no, 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 I'm not a cop. I'm in uh, retail sales. What do you sell? Orthopedic insoles. Holy fuck balls, that sounds boring. You know, it's, it's an excellent product. I'm the uh, regional sales manager. Well, look at you all proud and shit. Well, I worked hard for it. So you understand business, right? So we doing business or not? <laughs> no. I mean, I got daughters your age. How is that my problem? I didn't come down here for that. I was just driving around, and the next thing I know... Oh, so you feel sorry for me? Want to buy me a warm meal, get inside my head, see why I fuck for a living, change my life for the better, then ride on your white horse in the night? That old chestnut. That old chestnut? Wow, that's an expression from, like, the 20s, and you don't even look My grandmother used to say it. I mean, so... Why are you here? I mean, folks who get lost in this hood don't usually stop to ask hookers for directions unless they're trying to start a conversation about something else. And you look like you're about to shit your pants, so. You know, I don't actually know exactly how I got here. Okay, so here's the deal. I fuck for a living because it pays good and people don't usually ask me a lot of stupid questions. Now, I can be your girlfriend, your nasty ass wife, your mommy, a cheerleader, or whatever the fuck you need. But if all you want is directions, go fucking Google it. Fucking no, bitch. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't fucking Shut do this. Shut your mouth or I swear I'll fucking kill you, bitch. Don't do it. Fuck it, bitch. I'm sorry you couldn't get up, you piece of shit, but it's no fucking way fuck. Hey, you can step right out of this story. She's a lying whore. Watch me fuck her right now. put the knife down. You can work this out. Shut up. I'm gonna fuck you then. I'm gonna carve your lying ass up. Well, I can't help it if you're a little man. Then I just say, whoa, this shit is in you. Oh, shit. I'm a fucking guy. Did she just say little man? Jesus, that shit is funny. Shut the fuck up here, you're, you're after her. I guarantee my dick's bigger than yours, motherfucker. Damn, You see, I'm a black man, right? I swear to God, you open your fucking mouth and look What the fuck? Let's go. This bitch ain't a fucking cop. He's throwing a garbage can at me. He fights like a fucking real He took it off duty. I'm fuck. I'm fucking gone, bro. God damn. Jesus. Oh, what the fuck were you thinking? Tom has a couple of rib fractures. It can be painful for him to take a deep breath, so I've given him quite a bit of pain medication. He may be pretty sleepy, and he may not even remember that you were here. It's probably for the best. <laughs> Why do you say that? I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, I got a weird sense of humor. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm going to check back with him later on tonight, OK? Hey, you're here, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you saved my life, it's the least. <laughs> yeah, I did, didn't I? Easy, Batman. <laughs> Ellen? Uh, no, don't answer, that's my wife. It's, it's Hi, Ellen? Yeah, um, I'm a nurse at Sutter Hospital. Your husband's here and he's pretty fucked up. <sighs> Well, um, I guess I better go. Thanks again. Okay. Oh, Jesus, Tom, what happened? I'm um, okay, Ellen. I don't know, you're clearly not okay. What happened? Um... I went out for a walk and uh, 
these two guys came up and they wanted my wallet and I tried to fight them. You, you, you tried to fight them? You didn't just give them your wallet? <laughs> you actually tried to fight them? That's insane, Tom. That is so not like you. They were out to hurt someone, Alan. And I don't, I don't feel as bad as I look. I'm fine. No, you're not fine, Tom. No. Ellen, I'm not fine. But the drugs are good, so I got that going for me. They said you cracked some ribs. Two to be exact. You must be in a lot of pain. Yeah, a bit. Do the girls know? About you here at the hospital? Yes, Helen, about me being here in the hospital, not you being home in bed with the neighbor. No. No, they don't know anything about that. Or this. Please, Tom, I don't want them to know anything about that. You don't want them to know anything now, or tomorrow, or ever? Ever! Tom, please, I beg of you. I know, I know this is gonna be hard for you to believe, but it was the first time. It was a mistake. Nonetheless, I caused this to happen to you. You didn't make this happen to me, Ellen. This was random. Well, if you hadn't come home and found... Well, you wouldn't have been out in the middle of the night wandering the goddamn streets. Well, that's for sure. Ellen, I don't blame you for this or the other thing. Listen, it, it's been a long, horrible night year and you're on a lot of drugs so let's just get you well and then we'll talk huh i'll call the girls in the morning and i'll tell them you're okay but no i'm not saying i forgive you i'm just saying that i understand why you did it that's on me Hey, uh, morning, Tommy Cullen. <laughs> you came back. Are you all right? Fit as a fiddle. <laughs> Your grandmother say that too? Yep, Granny Mae. Uh, was that your wife that just left? Yeah, yeah, you saw her? Yeah, I was, uh, I was waiting in the hallway. I figured you'd appreciate that. Mm. She's pretty. Yeah, she is, still. Looks way younger than you do. <laughs> How long y'all been married? 25 years. Fuck! Huh. Long time. <laughs> Turns out a little too long. What's that mean? Nothing. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm really glad you came back. I'm, are you sure those guys didn't hurt you? Trust me. <laughs> I've been fucked a lot harder than that by people who weren't trying to kill me. Okay. Well, I'm... Really glad you're all right. Uh, how are you? Talk about getting fucked. Uh, I'm fine. My wife didn't believe I tried to fight those guys. Didn't know her old man doubled as a superhero. <laughs> hmm. You know, believe it or not, that was the first time I've ever been in a fight before. Oh, I totally believe it. <laughs> I mean, no offense, but wow, that was sad. <laughs> Well, it's a thought that counts, right? In this case, absolutely. Uh, your wife wonder why you got your ass kicked at 3 a.m. on San Rose Avenue? She wasn't in a position to ask too many questions. Why is that? She was upset. Okay. Well, um, I better get out of here before you get more family showing up or something, and, uh, I need a fucking smoke, so <laughs> hang in there, Tommy. Hey, what was your name? May. Just like your grandmother, huh? Yeah, just like Granny May. <laughs> Except for the whole whore part. <laughs> I gotta go, Tommy. <clears throat> Dad, are you awake? Hey, loves. God, my
mom said you broke a couple ribs. Are yeah. you okay? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Mom said you tried to fight some guys. Is she confused? No, no, I was probably confused. I was on a lot of medication. And listen, I, I went out to get your mom some flowers and I got mugged. That's not what she said. She said you came home and couldn't sleep because you were having some kind of anxiety attack, so you went out for a walk and got mugged. Wait, so you were on a lot of drugs and you went out to get her flowers? No, 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 I was on a lot of drugs here last night, you know, when I was talking to your mom. Look, yes, I, I, I was anxious and I couldn't sleep. And so I, I oh, you know what, it, it doesn't really matter. It was a bad idea, okay? And I'm fine. Oh, did you guys remember your mother's birthday? I got her a nice candle. Oh, honey, your mother's got more candles than the Pope. Exactly, she loves them. And it was easy, and you didn't have to think no, about Dad, it? No, Dad, that's... I got her a Manny Petty gift certificate, because she loves Manny Petties. Oh, nice. Did you do it over the phone, or did you actually have to drive three blocks to the salon? Oh, shut up, you hypocrite. At least Mom doesn't have three closets full of Manny Petty gift certificates. Oh. It's tomorrow, right? It's today. Shit. Okay, no worries, we have time. I should probably get going then, because... Yeah, go. It's okay. I'm yeah. fine. Just because um, Steph and Zach are in town this week, and it's the only time we have to hang out. Wow, gee. So if Dad was on his deathbed, you're saying that hang time with Zach and Steph would be the main priority. Don't be such a drama queen, Christy. He's not on his deathbed. You're okay, right, Dad? I'm fine, honey. I'm okay. Okay, bye. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay, well, if you're really okay, then I'm gonna head out too because Terry only works till noon and we're gonna go shopping. Okay, no, that's good. I'm fine, honey. Okay, I love you. Love you too. Okay, bye bye. Hello, sweetie. Hello. How are you? Oh, I missed you so much. Good girl. Good girl. Did you miss me? Did you miss me, sweetie? Oh. Okay. You okay? Yeah. No, I'm good. Uh, listen, I'm going to go upstairs and get some rest, okay? Oh, did you need any help getting up there? No. I can no. turn I'm, down the bed for you. I'm fine. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Well, I'll be here all day if you need anything. No. Oh, I can make you some of that tomato soup that you like. You know what? I'm not hungry. Tom, Tom, please don't do this. Okay, first of all, you're not well, and I can take care of you. Tom, what I did was horrible, and I know that. But I was lonely. I was lonely for you. <laughs> oh, no, no, listen, I mean, I know there's no way I can talk my way out of this, so just let some time pass, recuperate, and I can help you with that, and then maybe... Am I supposed to sleep in this bed? No. No, I, I understand why you wouldn't want to do that. You could sleep in Christie's room. Okay, I'm time. not sleeping in Christie's room or Gina's room or any other room in this house. Tom, we weren't connected anymore. We would just say and do the same things over and over and over again. And we haven't made love in I don't know how long. I mean, I'm just as guilty about that. Tom, do you know what you would do first thing when you would come home? You would bend down and fuss all over Misty. You'd rub noses with her, you'd let her lick your face. 
She'd roll over for you and you'd scratch her belly and you'd say the sweetest things about how much you missed her. And then you'd stand up and kiss me on the cheek, go get something to eat, after a week of being gone. You were jealous of the dog, so you slept with the neighbor? I'm not jealous of the goddamn dog. Look, look oh. I, Elle, I told you, it's my fault, okay? I take full responsibility. But you slept with Daryl in this bed. Now, I don't know if this would be easier if you slept with Daryl somewhere else, but strangely, you didn't. Tom, I was drinking. It's what I do when you leave. I might even have a problem. I know that's not an excuse. So, uh, you got drunk? Daryl came over to borrow the lawnmower. He took advantage of you, that old chestnut? Yeah, listen, ever since that alarm system broke, I've been a little paranoid, and I heard something outside, so I called Daryl to see if he could see something from outside his window. And, and he... like a good neighbor, Daryl was there? <laughs> did you check the closet, did he? Under the bed? Under the sheets? Between your legs? Pretty thorough, that Daryl. Tom, Look, please don't do this. L. as far as I know, Misty did not sneak over to Daryl's house while I was gone and hump his dog. She met me at the door like she always does first, happy to see me, wagging her tail, licking my face, while you were up here rolling over for Daryl. So as far as I'm concerned, right now, Misty is clearly in first position. Please, let's talk. Please, wait, don't, you're not supposed to lift anything over 10 pounds. Tom. Tom. Why did you want me? I did want you, Elle. I wanted you here when I came home. You know, to tell me everything was going to be all right when I felt like driving off a cliff. I wanted you to grow old with me. And I wanted you to put your head on my chest when we went to sleep at night. That's not what I meant. I know. And honestly, I don't, I don't have a good answer for what you meant. I know I love you more than anything. And when we finally do get around to having sex, it's always lovely. I mean, at least for me. But I'm so tired, L. So sick and tired of my life. Hotels, airports, airplanes, sitting in restaurants alone. And trying to cover the nut every month for this life we built for ourselves. I mean, the, 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 the house, the college tuitions, the, the bad economy, and my stomach burning. I mean, who are we kidding? You need me to make the first move to prove that I still love you. And I need you to make the first move for the same reason. So neither one of us does anything. We cancel each other out. And then along comes Daryl. And he looks at you for a moment, the way I used to look at you all the time. And he makes the first move. And the next thing you know, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> but you know what? I get it, Al. I really do. But I gotta go. Hey girl. Me? You see another girl around here? What? 
Just wanted to talk to somebody. How old are you? 19. Bullshit. You got a home? Yeah. A real one, with a mommy and a daddy. My mom? She put food on the table your mother? Yeah, she's a nurse. Shit. Nurses make pretty good money. You don't know how lucky you are, do you? Yeah, except she's a bitch. Is that right? What makes you say that? She hates my boyfriend, is always up in my shit about everything, got a curfew, mm. and won't even get me a goddamn car. Mm -hmm. Know what? If I had a daughter dumb enough to be wandering these streets at 1 a.m., I'd be up in your shit too. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> you ain't got the money, girl. Now take your 16-year-old ass home and kiss your mother for taking care of you before I call the cops. Like you're gonna call the cops. Hey, May, you hungry? Jeepers, Batman. Yeah, I could eat something. So you good? I mean, you look good. Yeah, I, uh, still a little sore in the ribs, but I'm breathing a lot easier. How about you? Fine. Hmm. So, uh, when's the last time you had a good meal? Hmm. Not since lunch. I'll make a fucking good living, Tommy. Lose the holy of the now shit, okay? Okay, sorry. Uh, apparently, I uh, assume a lot of things I really don't know anything about. Hmm. You in some kind of midlife crisis? Why do you ask? Because something is majorly fucked up with you. What makes you say that? Well, let's start with driving through a part of town at 3 a.m. that guys like you only see on reality shows. And most of the guys I meet are in a midlife crisis, so I know the signs. And unlike most guys I meet, you don't want to fuck. And you came back, which, although I'm delighted, is fucking weird. Yeah. I came home from a business trip and I found my wife in bed with our neighbor. Oy vey. Your grandmother Jewish? I eat a lot at a kosher deli down on 4th. So, you assume that your wife wouldn't cheat on you? I did indeed. Mm. <laughs> indeed. Nobody says indeed. But you know what they do say about assume, right? You either make an ass out of you or me or your wife fucks the neighbor. You know, you're harsh. Indeed. Sorry, a little bit too much truth for you, Tommy? Maybe a little too much too soon. Well, isn't that what a midlife crisis is about? Facing down the truth about your life? So they say. Uh, did you get enough to eat there? Perfect, thanks. Listen, I want to pay for your time, so how much do you charge for an hour? Do you really want to pay for my time, or are you just curious what I charge for an hour? I guess a little bit of both. The other night, remember you told me that uh, I had to pay for your meal and pay for you to eat it? My rates depend on what my client wants. Oh, you call them clients? Yeah, what else? Oh, John's, Tricks. It's a business, Tommy, they're clients. Uh, you wanna take a walk? I need to work off these fucking fries before I go back to the office. Uh, sure. So, uh, do you have a pimp? <laughs> I have a manager. Huh. Is he good to you? She's very good to me, yes. Oh, a woman. Mm-hmm. Surprised? Yeah, I, I am kind of surprised. I mean, can she protect you? Like from those guys the other night? Nobody could have done anything about those douchebags the other night. Present company excluded. <laughs> you don't have to worry about me, Tommy. Seems like you're the one with all the problems. So, you still love your wife? Yeah. She love you? Well, based solely on the current situation, I'm not sure. Just because she fucked the neighbor doesn't necessarily mean shit. I mean, it could have been a needy fuck from what I'm hearing, so. Yeah, that's kind of what she said. Well, all right. Mystery solved. <laughs> so why did you stop paying attention to your wife? 
I don't know. I just, I guess I was just feeling sorry for myself, asking myself too many stupid questions. Mm. Like, um, was I a good dad? A good husband? Does anybody care I exist? Blah, blah, blah. All that poor me, self-absorbent midlife crisis shit. Did you uh, learn that from your clients? Yeah. And Granny Mae. I mean, apparently that's what did my grandpa and ended up blowing his brains out. <clears throat> wow. Sorry. No, it's cool. I mean, it was way before I came along. But it fucked Granny Mae up. Bless her heart. Now, how old are you? You never mentioned. And uh, if I uh, have my eyes closed, you sound like a very hip 65-year-old. <laughs> Granny May always said I was an old soul. So anyway, um, I owe you and you don't want to fuck, so I mean, I could blow you or hand job or whatever, but, but I, I, it's important for me to pay you back. Please, don't do that, May. Come on, Tommy. I mean, maybe you saved my life for a reason. I mean, I don't know what it is yet and I plan to find out, but until then, I owe you. Yeah, okay. Well, then maybe we could just uh, go out once in a while and talk. Look, Tommy, I'm real appreciative of the other night, but I really don't need you to save me, okay? You know me, you make a lot of assumptions. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe you're saving me. A little self-absorbed, aren't we? Fuck you, Tommy. I'll see you when I see you. Go home and talk to your wife. I got shit to work out. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Tom. New Orleans got washed out, I hear. Yeah, you should probably book me again for next week or whenever the storm's over and let their office know down there. Sure, and uh, Jim wants to see you when you get a chance. He's in this early? Yeah, I think. Do you want coffee first? Am I gonna need coffee? Never hurts to be prepared. Then yes. Hey, Jim, you looking for me? Hey, buddy. Nola got washed out, huh? Yeah, I'll get back down there next week. Well, you took some days off, I heard. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Well, you got about nine million on the book, so... Good for you! Yeah. Sit down! Want some water or something? No, no, I'm good. What's going on? Well, this is a tough one for me, Tom. You gotta know how much respect I have for you. Hang on, hang, hang, hang on a second. What? Conversations that start out like this are doomed, okay? What's going on? Uh, my numbers are really good relative to the bad. No, 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 absolutely. Without question, that's not where I'm going with this. Your job is, you're here to stay. You and I, we'll die here, God willing. <laughs> Clearly we are praying to two different gods, Jim. <laughs> However, um, we just figure that it's time to move to the next phase. You know what I'm saying? I have. No idea what you're saying. Uh, so who's the we in this scenario? Corporate, totally. This isn't coming from me, but I have to put it in the we category, right? I mean, we're all on the same team here. That has really never been true here, and you know it, Jim. So um, what's this new phase we're talking about? Well, I think this is a really good fit because, um, you know, being a family man and all, and I know how tough it is to be on the road. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> what? Are you pulling me off the road? Look, I got no choice. Uh, corporate values your experience, Tom. Do they? Do they really? Yeah, they do. It's just that they feel that the face of the company needs to... Those guys interacting with the clients, that face needs to be younger, more youthful. You know, Jim, I already have a boss that I trained. How much more humiliation am I supposed to take? My numbers are as good, if not better, than anybody's in this company. And I can't make as much money sitting in here behind a desk as I can out there on the road. And besides that, I don't know how to do anything else. And you know that. 
You know how I know you know that, Jim? Because I taught you everything you know. Look, don't make this about me and you. I love you, man. That's a fucking fact. If you want to stay on the road, I will fall on the sword with corporate for you. But just know one thing. They want this done one way or the other. They've made that pretty clear. So before you make any decisions, think about it, okay? So, how do you do it, May? I mean, there's gotta be times when you don't wanna go to work or you don't wanna, you don't wanna do whatever it is your client wants you to do or maybe you're just tired and you wanna put your feet up. That's the last fucking thing I wanna do when I get home. I put my feet up for a living. No, 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 I, I didn't mean like that. I, I it was a joke, Tom. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, except for you missed it. First of all, I love to fuck, so that helps. And I love money. And I have a good work ethic. I get that from Granny Mae. Yeah, but still, there's gotta be times when you, you know, just like any other job, you just don't wanna do it. Sit. I mean, sure. Once in a while, I... Sometimes, if I'm not in the mood to work, I'll smoke a joint. Hmm. I don't make a habit of it, though. It feels... I don't know, I'm professional, I guess. I also drink a shitload of espresso. <laughs> you know, you really do have quite the work ethic. I admire that. You wanna fuck Tommy? Seriously. If I've met anyone that needs a good fuck, it's you. On the house, it's my treat. We could go back to my apartment and you know. I can't, man. Why? Cause you're married. I think your old lady let you off the hook there. And so what? You got two daughters older than me. They never gotta know. It's just a good, old-fashioned fuck. You owe it to yourself every once in a while. Like a good massage, except for you get your rocks off. You really want to do that with me? Why not? I fucked a lot worse, and none of them saved my life. I'm sorry. That, that came out wrong. <laughs> You saved my life, and you're a good person, Tommy. You're nice, you're clean. You look good for an old guy. Oh. Yes, I absolutely want to. You did something for me that was very brave. You know, I am more than old enough to be your father. That's cool, I'll call you daddy. <laughs> Come on, let's walk some more. So, what do you plan to do about the neighbor? What do you mean? What, you just gonna ignore the motherfucker? <laughs> Wave to each other while you're both mowing the lawn? Pretend he didn't just stick his cock in your old leg? Aw, man. Jesus. You gotta deal with this shit, Tommy. Look, I moved out of the house, okay? Problem solved. Oh, so that's your fix? <laughs> Jesus, Tommy. I, I know you think this is all your fault, but that doesn't mean a little revenge wouldn't taste sweet. Get up in this asshole's grill. Fuck his wife, whatever. Oh, oh God, Meg, I'm not even attracted to the woman. Tommy, this isn't fucking Match.com. This is about revenge. <laughs> okay, like what? The options are endless. Point is, you gotta deal with this shit if you wanna feel like a man in the story. You know, they're two consenting adults, okay? And, and I just wanna put the whole thing behind me. And if this is your way of paying me back, Meg, no, please don't. No, Tom, no. This is about making a big mistake. There are plenty of ways and no punches have to be thrown. Point is, you need to deal with the shit if you want to feel like a man. End of story. Look, this is not about Daryl, okay? It could have been anybody else. May, <laughs> it's about me. Tom, listen to me. Okay, part of what's wrong with you, part of why your wife is so bored with you, is because you got to stop feeling sorry for yourself and taking the heat for everything and everybody else because it's easier to deal with shit. You need to know what it feels like to be a man. And a man does not let a douche like neighbor fucking Daryl come in his own house and fuck his wife. No fucking way. And when you realize that, you will start the rest of your life. Thanks, Lieutenant. Why do you do that, man? Call me Lieutenant. You think that's funny? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm honored. An officer and a gentleman nonetheless. <laughs> 
You could have had any hook in the city and you chose me. Uh, I think you just like the idea of fucking a cop, don't you? Sure I do. Job security. <laughs> Plus you're one of the few cops I've had that's actually in decent shape. I used to think that whole donut thing was a myth, but turns out some of you guys actually hang out at Dunkin' Donuts while they're on the clock. Oh, yeah? You want to give me the name of some of these guys? I do not. They're not bad guys, and they're probably good cops. Just fat. Plus, they're protected under hooker clan privilege. You know what, LT? Put your money away, cancer. And why is that? I need a favor. I need you to find a guy for me. Hey, if it saves me 300 bucks, I'll find Jimmy Hoffa for you. Who's Jimmy Hoffa? Never mind. You got a name? Mm. I love me some fucking beef empire. Your uh, mom a good cook? No idea. Granny Mae? God, no. <laughs> the worst fucking cook in the world. <laughs> How about your dad? Tommy, um, do me a salad, all right? And, um... Uh, Quit with the sneak up on me, pecan Kai line of questioning, okay? You're not as clever as you think you are. Sorry, I was just trying to get to know you a little bit better. You know me well enough, Tommy. Treat me like a good book and turn the page forward, okay? Fair enough. And speaking of good books, you ever read uh, John Adams' Letters to His Wife Abigail? Ah, oh. and back then letters were the only way they could communicate, so language was so much more precious and, and beautiful there. Grocery lists read like poetry. You uh, read? Of course I fucking read. What's wrong with you? I was a straight A student up until my freshman year of high school. No, I, I didn't. I meant you like to read. You know that, that that's all I do on the road. You know, in hotels and airports. Yeah, I love to read. Okay. Uh, well then, I'll bring you the book. Maybe it'll cut down on the mind-numbing amount of times you substitute the F word for a whole variety of other nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives. You know, for. Another word that's far more interesting. You know, you use that word over and over and over again, and it is just, you know, kind of strips it of its power. You know? it kind of nullifies it and turns it into white noise. It's, it's just it's meaningless. You know, uh, and, and, you know I, I got nothing against the word. It's a perfectly good word when you use it correctly and give it its impact. Fucking A. Thanks, Tommy. I'll take a fucking look at your fucking book and see if I can fucking understand all the fucking multi fucking syllabic words. Okay, so uh, what happened to your freshman year? I dropped out. Why? Because there's this thing, you might have heard of it, the internet. If they just taught you all the things that really help you through life, high school will be one year, college will be one year, and you'll still only be 16. Yeah, if all kids were as smart as you are, but they're not. You have a computer? What? You don't think hookers have computers? You know, you really need to get your head out of your ass. Mate, right, look, I'm not trying to put you on a defensive. Why do you come here? I mean, why do we keep meeting like this? Because I find you fascinating. What? Like a science experiment? Some project you're working on to make you feel better? No, because we have real conversation. Well, I find you a fucking cliche, so. I could see why someone like you might see me that way. Look, that was, that was rude. I'm sorry. I can be a dark fuck sometimes. Truth is, I like you. And then there's a whole thing about saving my life or whatever. Is this still about you, you know, paying me back our visits? No. I mean, at first, yeah, it was, but I mean, you didn't want the pity fuck, so I felt obligated. Don't, don't feel obligated, May. You know, it kind of ruins the whole thing. I don't. I, I really don't. I'm... Obligation was stage two. I'm in stage three now. What's stage three? I actually look forward to seeing you for some fucking reason. <laughs> I don't know, it's just like, it feels like kind of like we're friends. And I know that probably sounds weird to you. No, I mean, on every level, we qualify as friends, right? I mean, why not? I mean, well, because, you know, I'm old and you're young. Who cares, right? We meet, we talk. 
You know, you, you challenge me like only a friend could or would, and we don't have sex. Friends, look it up on Wikipedia. Hot out here, huh? You know, sweetie, that does not look at all like a fucking beer. No, it does not. Sorry, honey, we're out of beer. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, and whose fault is that? You know, I know I make the money for the fucking beer, and I'm pretty sure it's your job to go get it. Daryl, I went shopping. I forgot the list, and I thought we had some in the garage. The kids were in a rotten mood, screaming in Bevmo, running all over the place. Really, really, you forgot the list, and now you throw the kids under the bus? You know, I'm sweating my ass off out here mowing your fucking lawn. My lawn? What the hell is that supposed to mean? You know, when I bought you this house, you wouldn't shut up about the beautiful lawn. Look at it. Oh, always wanted a big front lawn. Blah, blah. Dream come true. Fuck me. Okay, look, I do love the lawn, and I really appreciate... Why the is there not a beer in my fucking hand? Daryl, do you want the glass of water, don't you? Well... For lack of a motherfucking thirst-quenching, buzz-inducing, my wife forgot to goddamn buy me beer option. I guess it'll have to do. See? I never would have done that with a beer. And look how refreshed you are, sweetie. Real mature, Linda. You beat your kids. No, 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 no. Never. No, I couldn't handle the guilt. <laughs> Your girls must be spoiled rotten. No, uh, I don't know. I did try to give them everything they needed. Every decision Ellen and I made from the moment those kids were born was in their best possible interest. Every single solitary decision. They know how fucking lucky they are. I like to think so. But, you know, maybe not till they get older and have their own kids. Mm -mm. They need to know how lucky they are now. They're not fucking five years old anymore. Well, you know, I made some mistakes, but I always had the best intentions. And I think a guy should get some bonus points for that, even if it didn't come out exactly as planned, you know? I mean, I'd like to do it over again, but I can't. They don't confide in me. They don't ask me for advice. I mean, it's gotten to the point where I'm really just another guy my kids happen to know, you know? I'm pretty sure they know most of their friends a lot better than they know their own father. I'm the guy who pays the bills, you know? Tells them when to turn out the lights, go to bed, do their homework. And I wasn't around a lot when they were young, but I was out there on the road trying to get them everything they needed. You know, I'm not the most affectionate person. I always felt, you know, warm and fuzzy and friendly inside, but it just never came out of me the way I wanted it to. I mean, what is it you want from them? I mean, when you first had kids, were you like looking for that trophy that says world's greatest dad or something? No, no, I mean, it's just that when you spend your whole life trying to make somebody happy, it's only human nature to want some small token of appreciation, you know? And no trophies, no grand gestures, but just some appreciation for a good try. And maybe a follow-up question once in a while when your kid comes in and says, Hey, Dad, how's it going? And I say, Okay, honey. And clearly I'm not okay. And anybody who really knew me or was paying attention would know that. And they'd ask the follow-up question. That's all I'm looking for. One follow-up question and not just another candle. Seems fair enough. Anyway, look, it's my fault in the end. I mean, when you give somebody everything they want their entire life, it's only natural they come to expect it. <laughs> Is everything really your fault, Tommy? You just don't seem like the kind of man that drinks light beer. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, I gotta keep my girlish figure just like you, don't I? 
I just didn't figure you for the kind of guy that does anything halfway. Is that right? Well, now you're just trying to make me look bad. You ever want to drink a real beer sometime? You just let me know. What's your name? Melissa. What's yours? Have the three of us ever gone out to dinner without mom before? Yeah, we must have at some point. You know, when mom was working and uh, you guys were small. But I honestly don't remember it. I figured we're three adults and we could go out together without mom. Besides, she's been a little tired uh, and she thought it would be a good opportunity for us to spend some time together. Without her? Yeah, yeah, without her. I mean, you know how it is when the three of you get together and it turns into this whole other kind of thing than when the three of us get together, which, which is good. It's just, uh, just a different dynamic is all. Is there something wrong with mom, dad? Gita, there is nothing wrong with your mother. Cause she's been off lately, acting really bitchy about stuff. Gina, don't do that, okay? Don't say bitchy when referring to your mother. It's very disrespectful. I didn't say she was a bitch, dad. I said she was being bitchy, like a temporary state of mind. Don't, G, he's right. Wait, Christy, aren't you the one who referred to mom the other night as being on the rack? Well, at least I had the common decency not to say it in front of dad. Hey, hey, girls, enough, okay? Get in the car. Don't you ever, ever refer to your mother in those terms again, ever. Not in private, not in my presence, not anywhere. Simply out of respect for a woman who has given her life to us, everything for you two. Worked her rear end off every day. You simply could not find a more dedicated, loving mother. And for that reason alone, whether she was in a bad mood last week, last night, whenever, you owe her so much more than that. Sorry, Dad, really, you know that we didn't mean it that way. Yeah, well, you know how to fix that? You think before you speak. You choose words that represent what you really mean, and then you use those instead. It was just like a figure of speech, Dad. Well, it was like an inappropriate figure of speech that clearly did not convey the message you intended. Okay, okay, look. I'm sorry. Your, your mother's just, your mother and I are just a little stressed out. You know, I may be thinking about the future too much, you guys moving on and, you know, it's like having a leg cut off. I mean, you know, you think it's still there and you reach for it and it's gone. And it's painful. And this great sadness sets in and because you know it's never coming back. At least not the way it was. And your mind starts to play tricks on you. So we're not, we're not at our best. And you, you're gonna have to be more patient with us. That's cool. Yeah, I, I hear you, Dad. And you're not getting any younger, so I know that can be stressful too. There was a section on aging in my Psych 2 class sophomore year. I remember feeling super depressed even when I was just thinking about it. Yeah. That too. Come on, baby, let's get this done. Listen, I'm just as excited about this as you are. Are you coming in or aren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, was I supposed to hit him? I don't know, May didn't say. Well, it's it just easy this way, eh? Definitely. I'm gonna text May. What's this guy's deal anyway? Uh, I don't know, some friend of May's, he was fucking his wife or something when he was out of town. <laughs> Anybody, anybody may once fucked up as a guy, I want to fuck up. Ha! I do love me some May. Everybody loves May, baby. Uh, I ever tell you about the time uh, my mom was sick? Cancer and all that? May? Oh, goddamn May. <laughs> she stayed with my mom days and nights on end when I couldn't be there. 
feed her soup and such. I get home, all my mama would talk about was that scrawny, skinny little black girl made take care of her shit. <laughs> That's our girl. Uh, Jesus, you crying on me, D? Fuck no. It's just that, yeah, my mom barely knew her, you know? I, I mentioned one fucking time that my mom was sick, and the next thing I know, the very next night, here comes May with a motherfucking tuna casserole. And that shit was good. Uh, two weeks later, my mom dies in bed. I was on my way to, way to see her. I get there, and May's holding her hand. My mom dies in bed with a woman she barely knows for two fucking weeks. May gets up, hugs me real tight, and just walks out the door. May's a motherfucking angel, you know what I'm saying? Tie this tip shit up, Dorian. You're gonna make me cry. I wouldn't be doing this nonsense in the first place if it wasn't for May. You even like sex, Tommy. Jeez, you know, May, you really do get right up in people's faces, don't you? That's the only way to be, Tommy. I mean, I believe people waste a fuckload of time trying to second guess what's on everybody else's mind. Yeah. Well, uh, well, of course I really love sex. Mm, okay. But what? I didn't say but anything. Uh, you did. You implied the but. I, I mean, you didn't say the but out loud, but the fucking but was there. I, that, that's ridiculous. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, look. Of course I really enjoy sex, uh, but I just, I'm just not sure I was that good a lover. Why do you say that? I don't know. Look, the big advantage I had was when I met Ellen, of course she was very inexperienced, being much younger than me, and uh, you know, so I had that going for me. Hmm. So let's hope the neighbors sucks more than you do. Yeah, well, he's a bit of a narcissist, so I'm assuming that uh, he spent all the time on himself and left her out of the scenario altogether. And you love her, so I hear that helps. Your equipment good? What do you mean? Your cock, is it fully functional? Yeah, it functions pretty well. I mean, you make it sound like a craftsman power tool. How big is it? God, May, uh, compared to who? You never measured your cock? No, no. I call bullshit all men measure. Okay, yeah, I measured. Oh, okay. uh, it, 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 it's average, according to Wikipedia. Well, there's nothing wrong with an average-sized cock if you know what to do with it. Is that really true? I mean, there's exceptions to every rule, but for the most part. I can get off all night with this little baby, so I'm sure you're more than enough. I mean, maybe that's why Mother Nature created most men with average-sized cocks, because that's all you really need. Fair enough. So, you believe in God? <laughs> Absolutely fucking lutely not. You? Mm, not anymore. I used to. I liked it when I believed in God. At least then I had somebody to blame things on, but you can't blame things on them if you don't believe them, right? Seems fair enough. Yeah. Hmm. So, I got a question for you. What? Do you think if a man watches porn, he can become a better lover? <laughs> no. Watching porn will only give you a bigger inferiority complex. Plus, the stories are stupid. I just think the whole porn experience would be a lot better with good stories and good actors. And the men in the movies should have average-sized cocks so that guys can relate and feel better about themselves. Like, and there must be, statistically, a greater number of good actors with average cocks, right? <laughs> like, I take better actors over bigger dicks every time. Like in Pretty Woman. If you actually got to see Richard Gere fuck the shit out of Julie Roberts with an average sized cock, that movie would have made five billion times more. Because guys would have been thinking, hey, I can fuck the shit out of Julie Roberts with my average sized dick. Right? Yeah. You're an old fashioned romantic. You're making fun of me, Tommy. No, absolutely not. I, it was a compliment. Well, maybe I am an old fashioned romantic. <laughs> so, how about you? I mean, if I was on the clock right now, and we were gonna do business, what would you like? I don't know, what, what are most men like? You mean the average man, Tommy? Same thing the average man likes? 
Tommy, you are really hung up on this being average shit. And there is nothing more boring than an average guy who thinks he's average. I mean, a cool guy that thinks he's nothing special is hot as shit. And a boring guy that thinks he's something special is at the very least funny as hell. But an average guy who thinks he's average has no place to go. I see your point. Okay. Well, to answer your question, all men want the same thing, except for the uber freaks, and I don't do that shit. But the rest want what, what you think. They want to be told what great fucks they are, how big their cocks are. They want the moaning and the groaning and, oh, baby, fuck me harder, you big stud with the little girl voice. That bullshit, you know. They want to be made to feel like men. They want to know that they're the best, the conquerors, the winners, you know, king of the beasts. about you? Oh, yeah. I guess I want the same thing. I, I want to feel like a man and I want to feel special, but if it isn't real, I don't get it. I mean, <laughs> that's the point, Tommy. My clients know I'm lying, but it makes no difference. They want to buy into the bullshit so bad, it doesn't matter. And I'm pretty damn convincing. So that helps. It's my job. Well, you know, maybe I just don't need it that bad or, or I just need it to be real. You know, I mean, while you're going on with the moaning and the groaning and all that stuff, I'd be thinking to myself, who the hell does she think she's fooling? Well, I can't okay. help you there, Tommy. Uh, well, what about what about you? Do, does, it, does it ever feel real for you? Sex is like pizza, Tommy. Even when it's not very good, it's worth having. No, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Have, have you ever made love? Have you ever been in love? I had a puppy once. Tell me about your wife. She's a good woman. Hmm. And this coming from the man whose wife fucked the neighbor. Okay, May, you know, what she did was horrible and unforgivable, but... Is it? Horrible and unforgivable? Yeah. Horrible, really? I mean, Hitler was horrible. All your wife did was fuck the neighbor because you weren't keeping up with the Joneses. So, not horrible by my standards. And everything is forgivable, so. Really? You believe everything is forgivable? I read this story once about this African woman in Rwanda who was forced to watch 13 of her 14 children and her husband slaughtered with a machete by her neighbor. And she chose to forgive him because she said her only choice was to kill herself or forgive, so that she could be a good mother to her one remaining child. So yeah, I'd have to say everything is forgivable. Wow. Where was her last child, number 14? I don't know, probably herding sheep or playing Game Boy in the jungle or some shit. If he doesn't become president, he's gonna be a big disappointment. Yeah. Well, okay, if this is the first time she slept with another man, and I think it is. I Why, mean... because she said so when you caught her red-handed? No, because that's what I want to believe, so I'm going to believe it. Good for you, Tommy. You need to engage in fantasy more often. <laughs> it's healthy. So let's you and I say this was her first time. Well, then up until that point, she was a good wife and a great mother. Mm, you got two spoiled daughters. You said she pretty much raised on her own, so I wouldn't say great. No, they're good girls, and they're going to be great women, and they got a great mother. And she dedicated her entire life to us. And that is, we're assuming, up until she gave the pussy to the neighbor. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, May, up until then. So, you, me, and nobody else on earth, complete honesty, cone of silence. You never once cheated on your wife. Not one of those lonely nights on the road. Well, you know, in retrospect, it may seem a little foolish, but no, I didn't. Why? Why? Well, because, you know, I just don't think there are that many things in this world anymore a man can really hang his hat on. And that promise that we made, 
That was the one thing I felt like I can control, you know, on me. Nobody could take that away. And whenever my life was spinning out of control, I hung on to that. And it kept me centered. And it was the only thing that actually made me feel like a man. You really love your wife, don't you? Yes, I do. How did you two meet? <clears throat> uh, we were at a party. And I walked in, and there she was across the room, and she looked so beautiful. At some point, we were finally introduced, and I was painfully shy. So, of course, she had to make the first move. She took me by the hand, she walked me out into the backyard, and she stuck her tongue halfway down my throat. And I'll tell you, it was the greatest moment of my life. But I don't know, I just got the feeling she really doesn't love me that way anymore, at least not like that. What did you want out of life? I mean, when you were younger, what is it you thought you wanted? I don't know. To be great at something. A great father, a great husband, a great salesman. I mean, I was a pretty good salesman, but I was... <laughs> Regional fucking sales manager. But, you know, I never really did anything extraordinary. Not once at any one thing did I ever live up to that word. Extraordinary. Uh. Hmm. Extraordinary. Uh. I don't know about that, Tommy. I mean, when you break the word down, it's like more ordinary than usual. <laughs> Extraordinary, like, like you're boring. And then sometimes you're more boring. Extra boring, like is, is that really what you wanted? Oh, shucks. Um, shoot. Can we go back to the office? Uh, I'm missing one of my earrings. I think I left it in the room. Granny may give it to me. Are you, you talking about the motel where you take your clients? Yeah, it'll take like two seconds. Oh, you can meet my manager. You know, May, I'm okay with not meeting your manager. Oh, come on, Tommy. You'll like her. Let's take your friend to work with you. Okay. Cool. I'm not real comfortable with this, May. Tommy, please. My numbers are down and she wants to know what the hell I've been doing with my time. <laughs> then why on earth would I want to go Tommy, in Tommy, it's a joke. Loosen the fuck up, will you? She's a good woman, a friend. You like her. Okay. Melissa, can I come in? some kinky shit, hey, Daryl? You know what? This will be a good opportunity for you two kids to work some shit out. Doesn't seem like neighbor Daryl's going anywhere soon, so I'm gonna go get a smoke and let you two kids talk. Oh! Fuck! May, May, look, this is a terrible idea. I mean, I, I know your heart was in the right place. Deal with the shit, Tommy. You'll thank me later. You did this to me? Well, no. Uh, but in, indirectly, yes, I guess I'm responsible. That fucking goon you hired busted my nose. Busted my fucking nose! That was not at my request. Oh, fuck you, Tom. You were angry with me. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Daryl. How'd they get you here? Don't act like you don't know what the fucking deal was, Tom, you giant piece of shit. I'm not buying it. They seduce you in a bar or something? Like fucking that? grocery store, you asshole! Well, you. You think this is fucking funny, Tom? Is this why your wife wanted to fuck me? Because she. she found out you're out doing whores behind her back? Huh? 
I don't think that was it, Daryl. I think she was just really, really lonely. <laughs> well, she fucked like she was really lonely, Tom. She fucked me like she hadn't had any in way too long. She was wild, man. Fucking wild. My cock is still sore. <laughs> How'd that make you feel, Daryl? You know what? Pretty fucking great, Tommy. Call me Tom. Pretty fucking great, Tommy. But I'll tell you what. As bad as she wanted it, I've had much better. Oh! Oh! oh. Jesus! Oh. God! Oh. Oh. oh, you see that in the movies! Oh. I think you, you fucking broke my jaw! God damn it, I think I broke my hand. Oh, fuck. Oh. 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 So, so how does this end, Tom? Oh. A giant fucking asshole! Were you gonna shoot me? I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't have a gun, so I guess that option's off the table. You gonna tell Linda? I don't know. I don't know. I fucking... I love her, Tom. I fucking love her. They make you laugh, but I do. I was sorry about your wife. There was no plan. I never even thought about it before. Honestly. Yeah, it just happened, huh? Exactly. I was just trying to be a good neighbor. She was she's drunk and I could tell she really didn't want to. It's my fault, Tom, and I'm sorry. Well, you know, Daryl, I hate to say it, but I really would like to see you with nothing. You know, you already have no sense of honor, decency, no dignity. You took what wasn't yours. You stole my most precious possession, and I can't even have you arrested. Had you stole my flat screen TV, you'd be behind bars right now. So what do we do now, Tom? How does this end? Turn over. Come on. Come on. Turn over. Ooh. Here. Are you going to tell Linda? No. Why ruin her life, too? Besides, you were just the random dick in this equation. You cut his nuts off at least? No, no, I thought about it. I think I uh, broke my hand. You break it on his face? I did indeed. <laughs> Good. I'm gonna buy you a blood rare, manly size cut of meat, and then we're gonna go to the ER and get your hand x-rayed. Okay. Thanks, me. You're welcome. Come on. <clears throat> you eat left-handed? Yeah. Good. I'll cut your meat for you. Okay. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi. Ellen, right? Yes. Hmm. I'm sorry, do I know you? No. I wanted to talk about your husband. You know my husband? Pretty fucking well, yeah. Excuse me? Ellen, I want you to do yourself a favor. Shut the fuck up and listen. Now wait a minute. Ellen, oh, shut the fuck you. up and listen. Sit down. Sit down. Look, Ellen, I don't think you're a bad person for what you did. I'm not judging you. I got no right. I just think you need to know that your husband loves you. And he's a good man. And good men are hard to come by. Now, he might not have the biggest cock, which, trust me, is rare and overrated. I mean, I'm not saying a big dick isn't fun every once in a while when the fucking guy knows what he's doing. He's not trying to stick it up your ass or whatever, but... Anyway, I could tell you this. He doesn't think he was a great husband or father, so he's not delusional. And he obviously loves your ass. He blames himself for you fucking the neighbor. Do you know how unfucking believable that is by itself? And he's not even mad at you. He's just fucking sad. Most men try to point the finger at anything in anybody else. Scream, punch a wall. But admit it was their fault? No fucking chance. Hell, you can barely get them to take directions, let alone fucking take the heat for what they've done. Men are not strong like us. They are the weaker sex. But there are exceptions. Ellen, and your husband is one of them. He owns his shit, and he wants to get better. He, he wants to give you the fucking double ovens, even though he can't afford them. And God knows you don't fucking need them. Abigail Adams didn't have two fucking ovens. And she cooked up a storm, took care of her kids, plowed the fucking fields, made her own clothes, and still had time to sit down and write these unbelievably beautiful letters. Now you were the one who was weak in this scenario, sorry to say. You were the one that broke the contract and fucked the neighbor. You should have just Straight up told your husband of 25 years that you were unhappy and needed a good fuck. But instead you went and did it behind his back while he was out keeping a fucking roof over your head and pitting those bratty two bitches through college. You should have just told him you needed him to show you how much he loved you. Like when you first met. But instead you fuck the neighbor. So be it, it's done. Tom would take you back in a heartbeat. But remember, he's shy, so you have to run back to him. Get on your fucking privileged knees and beg. And I think he'll take care of the rest. But it has to come from you, because you're the one who did the dirty deed, and he deserves better than that. Anyway, that's all I had to say. <laughs> Except if you're wondering, I couldn't get him to fuck me even though you gave him the perfect out. <laughs> and I tried, Ellen. He saved my life, and I offered him a free fuck to pay him back. But he wouldn't do it because he loves his wife. And some shit about needing something to hang his hat on. And men pay to fuck me, Ellen. Lots and lots of men, and he turned me down for you. And what you all have built together. <laughs> and I'm a whole hell of a lot hotter than you. No offense. I mean, you do look good for your age, but... Anyway, I gotta go. I need a fucking Wait, fuck. wait a minute. Who are you? I'm his friend. All right, hang on. Ellen. Hi. Uh, hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, can I come in? Oh, yeah, 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 come on in. Um, uh, why don't you sit? 
Oh, and can I get you any water or anything? Oh, no, I'm, I'm fine. This won't take long. Okay. Could um, you sit, though? Please? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. So, this young woman, uh, girl, really, came to see me. Who? Well, I don't know. But she knew you, Tom. Uh, she said you were friends. And she knew an awful lot about us. Yeah, that's May. Yeah, I, she was really young. And, well, um... Vulgar? Yes. Yeah, that's me. Listen, Ellen, I'm sorry that happened. I'm not sorry about me, but I'm sorry she came to the house. I'm sure what she had to say was not pretty. So I gather she's a prostitute. Yeah, she is. She said you saved her life. Well... Let's say I provided a much-needed distraction that sort of got in the way of her dying, really. So is that how you ended up in the hospital? Yeah. How did you meet her? I, I mean, I know you didn't sleep with her. She told me that. But how would you know her? Well, you know the other night uh, at the house, and when I left, I just started driving around and I ended up on the wrong side of town. I was lost and there she was. And I was just fascinated with this young girl, I mean, younger than our girls probably and obviously a prostitute and uh, I just wanted to know how old she was. I just, for some reason I just needed to know. And how old is she? She wouldn't tell me. And uh, then she walked away and she ran into two very dissatisfied customers and I did my feeble best to help her. Well, that's, it's extremely brave what you did, helping her in that way. Well, it turns out I'm no Batman. Well, I'm sure she's had a very tragic life. You know, honestly, I don't know that either. I mean, she's not one to feel sorry for herself. And, uh, she's very strong. And I was attracted to that because at the time I wasn't very strong. It was kind of like a moth to a flame. And she's really smart and wise beyond her years. And, but yeah, I mean, I, I can imagine she's had a very tragic life. Did you see her again after that night? Yeah, several times. She wanted to repay me. She's got this great work ethic and sense of loyalty and obligation and... <sighs> Those are qualities I admire. Do you plan on continuing the relationship? I do. Yeah. If she'll let me. I mean, I'd really like to help her. If she'll let me. Okay. Oh, maybe I can make her a nice dinner uh, in one of my two ovens. <laughs> Tom, I need you to come home, please. Uh, you can sleep in Christie's room, huh? Until we sell the house. Sell the house? Oh yeah, come on, it's too much. It's too big. It's it's too many ovens. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to stay close to the kids, of course, but maybe across town, something smaller less pressure. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about teaching. You know, take my retirement, get off the road, maybe teach English at the junior college. That would be lovely. Tom, you would be an amazing teacher. May, it's me. You hungry? Yeah, listen, I took your advice. I think we may have something to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. You want to grab some pecan pie? Okay. Good, good, good. About a half hour? Okay. Bye.
do this. Victims at Hillsburg and 10th. Yeah, are we okay? Where were you? I went. I went down to the bodega to get some tequila to celebrate. Oh. <laughs> Guess what? What? I turned 20 in two weeks. <laughs> oh. No more teenager. No, I'm not gonna miss it. <laughs> oh. You're not dying on me, are you? God, I hope not. You're not dying on me, are you? It's hard to say. <sighs> Fuck. May. Yeah? I've never wanted anybody to live as much as I want you to live. Well, <laughs> more than your family? Well, not more than my family, but right after them. You know, I was just trying to make a point. <laughs> Why, Tommy? Why? Why do you want me to live so bad? Well, because you are the most genuine, smartest, sweetest woman I've ever known. You're gonna have a great future, May. Oh, shuck. Thank you, a peach. <laughs> peach. Granny May? Mm -hmm. Always. Oh, is she still alive? Mm. No. Cancer ate up. Years ago, April. Oh, what were you like 14, 15? Oh, your mom and dad? I didn't know him, and um, well, let's just say she was prone to excess. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> it's relaxing. It's nice. I mean, I think I'm bleeding out. No, 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 stick your finger in it or something. Can you push your blouse back in it? Or I mean, Jesus, slow it down a little bit. You're the best man I've ever known, Tom. No. Come on, please, May. Don't, don't call me Tom. Not now, not ever. Just Tommy's good. You earned it. I got mad respect for you, Tom. <sighs> May, did something horrible happen to you? I mean, you could have been anything you wanted. Jesus, I could, I could help you. I mean, I could, I could put you through school. Ah, who needs school? <laughs> listen to this. You listening? Yeah. Yes, indeed. In the face of insurmountable odds, engaging in fisticuffs for the first time, putting your own life in grave peril, you managed to salvage mine. All for the sake of a tawdry young woman of ill repute. I find, I find that behavior to be exemplary. Far greater to my way of thinking than extraordinary. You read the book. The whole book. <laughs> oh, that was eloquent, eh? Worthy of John Adams himself. Fuck John Adams. <laughs> That's all Abigail. <laughs> oh man, do you hear the way you just said fuck? Huh? Now that was powerful, May. That was just, just beautiful. Man, you know what? I got you something. I got you some earrings. They're my grandmother's. You know, they're old fashioned. I gave them to my girls, but, you know, I just, it wasn't their style. Old earrings for an old soul. 
Here. May. In passing years, it walks the same. Just the names will change. We all will love too many times, but just the friends remain. And so these things I'll say to you over tea. For two on a wasted day When two friends meet and share I hope it's you that still will care In passing years We'll speak of truth And things we've learned since you Youth bears no age, only the stage, the lines, the first embrace. And so with that two people meet and they fall in love, one strong, one weak. But soon it's clear they must contend. To find an end Some endings glad Some endings sad Some strong But most are weak We'll sit with ours In a closing bar No game just friends remain And so these things I'll say to you Over tea for two on a wasted day When two friends meet and share I hope it's you that still Thank you.